Before you start this tutorial, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. This is a tutorial for how to make candles using paraffin wax. Before beginning, you should know that paraffin wax candles take about 24 hours to cool. Keep this in mind when you start preparing them if you have some sort of deadline. Hello, my name is Jordan. Hi, I'm Jordan's assistant. My name is me. Today, we're going to teach you how to make candles. Before we begin, it's important to get our supplies ready. You're going to need a large saucepan, a small pot that can fit inside the large saucepan. Be sure to pick one that you can get really dirty because the wax is hard to clean off and you may not be able to cook with it later. A candy thermometer, candle molds, candle wicks, the ones that come pre-cut with metal bottoms are best. Make sure that you purchase or cut them long enough to be taller than your candle mold. A large serrated knife that you won't use again for cooking. A large bowl. Materials to protect your workspace. I used an old magazine and a trash bag. Be sure to pick something that won't melt if you get hot wax on it by accident, or have something like a magazine between the hot wax and the thing that could melt. In my setup, I spread out the trash bag and then laid the magazines on top of it. The trash bag catches all of the wax and other mess and the magazines catch any hot wax. Something you can use to hold your wick in place while the wax cools. You can use toothpicks, chopsticks, or any number of things with some sort of tie or rubber band. I chose to take apart cheap wooden clothes pins in combination with twist ties and rubber bands, but I'll show you more about this later. Candle coloring cubes. These are optional, but make the candles more pretty. You must buy the special dye for candles because water-based dyes like food coloring will not work. Candle scenting oil. These are also optional. Safety goggles. Normally, safety goggles aren't considered an optional tool, but in this case they are. Some people find the fumes of melting paraffin wax to be irritating to the eyes or nose when you're up close to it. I found it mildly irritating, but not severely enough to wear goggles. My assistant, B, didn't find the fumes to be irritating at all. Use your own discretion when deciding to wear goggles or not. I'm not responsible for any damage that happens to your body because you choose not to. Plastic gloves. This is optional. I found that when I was cutting the wax, it dried my hands out a little. Nothing too serious, but if you have sensitive skin, you may want some. I didn't wear gloves when I cut up the wax, but I'm also not responsible if you choose not to wear them and damage happens to your body. Wax. This is the most important ingredient. There are many kinds of wax to choose from, but the most popular ones are paraffin, soybean, and beeswax. Some people also like to melt down old candles. However, all of these types of wax have different difficulties associated with melting them. They melt at different temperatures and cool at different speeds. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to make candles with paraffin wax. Paraffin wax is the traditional candle making wax and is still probably the most popular. Paraffin wax is good for beginners because it is easy to prepare, melt, and color. You can get all of these supplies except for the safety goggles, gloves, knife, and large pot or saucepan at a craft store. I got all of mine at Hobby Lobby and they had everything that I needed. I'm going to keep this supply list displayed for another few seconds and you can pause the video here if you would like to write it down for when you go to the store. Pause the video now if you need to. Alright, now that you have all of your supplies gathered, let's get started. Hey, if you have long hair, you're going to want to pull it back and also you want to wear some clothes that you don't mind getting dirty, an old t-shirt, shorts or jeans or painting clothes. Those all work well. If you want to wear gloves or goggles, you'll want to put them on right now. The first thing we're going to do since we pulled our hair back is set up our workspace with the protective materials we just discussed. I'm using a trash bag and some old magazine pages. If you have a dedicated workspace that you don't mind making a mess on, you can probably skip this step. Keep in mind this is a really messy activity. First, you're going to want to cover the workspace. We're going to cover the workspace with a trash bag, but foil or wax paper would probably work just fine. We're definitely not using the burners on that side of the stove, so we don't have to worry about the trash bag melting. Next, if you used a material that melts under heat like we did, you're going to want to put something else on top of it to catch the hot wax. We're going to use a few magazine pages, and we're going to spread them out just like this. You'll also want to keep some warm, soapy water in a cup nearby just in case there is a wax spill. 
Notice that we've set up our workspace a safe distance from where we'll be heating our wax. We're heating our wax on the left where the saucepan is. That way the stove doesn't melt the trash bag. First, you need to cut up your wax. Place the wax on an appropriate surface. We're going to put it on top of this magazine because we don't care if the magazine gets cut up. Take your knife, put the serrated edge against the wax block. Using your other hand a safe distance from the knife, run the knife back and forth until a small crack is cut into the block. Then, take the knife and press it down hard into the crack you've just made. Be careful that your fingers are not in the path of the blade while you're doing this. After some time, you'll start to feel the knife sink into the wax. If you keep pressing through, the wax chunk will begin to break off and eventually the knife will go all the way through. Repeat this process until you have made a lot of large chunks from the original wax block and then cut those chunks into smaller pieces. Keep cutting all of the pieces smaller and smaller until you have something like this. The smaller the wax pieces, the easier and more consistently they will melt. Place the wax pieces in your bowl. This is the most difficult part of making candles and also the most dangerous. Please be extremely careful while using the knife and make sure that your fingers are never in the path of the blade. We are not responsible if you cut yourself. If you are unsure how to properly handle a knife in a tricky situation like this, please do some research on safe knife using techniques before you attempt to cut the wax. Now that your wax is prepared, it's time to set up your double boiler. You must do a double boiler like this for your wax because directly melting the wax in a pan on the burner will burn the wax. Take your small pot and put it inside the larger one just like this. Fill the larger pot partially with water like this so that it doesn't boil over. There shouldn't be any water in the smaller pot at all. Place the double boiler on the stove. Notice that we kept the handle of our small bucket pulled up so that it doesn't get hot later. Place your wax pieces in the smaller pot. If you aren't sure how much wax to use, try a handful or two at first. You can add to it later if you want. Before you melt the wax, you're going to want to set up your candle molds and wicks. We decided to take apart wooden clothespins like this. Place the wick in the center of the mold like this. Then take the two halves of the clothespin and turn them inside facing out. You'll pinch them around the wick so that the wick goes through the little hole that you created by removing the spring. Be gentle when you're capturing the wick in the hole because the wick is fragile and can break easily. After the wick is securely in the hole, like this, and the pin halves are even, Use a twist tie, string, or a rubber band to hold them together around the wick. Adjust the placement of the clothespin halves and the wick so that the wick is centered like this. Place your mold in a heat safe space or in the center of the magazines in our case. Now it's time to start melting your wax. Turn the burner under your double boiler on. Set it to high heat. You want the water inside the larger pot to boil so that the wax in the smaller pot can melt. Once the water is boiling, keep it boiling. You'll start to see the wax melting. As the wax melts, you can put the tip of your candy thermometer in the wax to gently stir and push it around. 
Do not leave your candy thermometer sitting in the wax because the thermometer is made of glass and the heat of the pots could cause it to burst. Periodically check the temperature of the wax to make sure it isn't too hot. When all of the wax is done melting, it will be a clear, runny liquid and the temperature should be between 122 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. If your wax gets too hot, it may start burning. If your wax is fully melted and above 150 degrees Fahrenheit, try adjusting the temperature of your burner to keep the temperature more consistent and in the range of 122 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. At this time, you can add your scent. I chose not to purchase a scent. If you choose to use one, make sure that you base your measurement of the scent on the packaging directions and not just on what you can smell while you're adding it. It's easy to over or under scent the candle if you don't measure it. After adding your scent, you can add your color. I'm going to use these blue candle dye blocks. You should try to read the directions on the package to determine how intense you want the color to be. My packaging didn't come with directions, so I experimented a little with mine. I like a nice intense color, so I'm going to use a few of these blocks. When you add the color blocks, they will immediately start melting. To speed the melting process, you can gently stir them around with your candy thermometer. The dye is done melting when you can no longer see any chunks and the wax looks like a colored clear liquid. It'll look something like this whenever it's done. Now that your wax is fully melted, scented, and dyed, you're ready to start pouring it into the mold. Grab an oven mitt or some other kind of hot pad and protect both of your hands. In most cases, you would need to have on two oven mitts. My wax is in a pot with a handle though, so I'm only going to wear one oven mitt. After you lift the wax out of the double boiler with both hands, you should have one hand on the bottom of the pot and one on the top rim for pouring precision. Instead of having a hand on the top rim, I'm going to have my other hand on the handle of this bucket. Slowly move over to your workspace and hold the wax bucket close to your mold. You'll want to pour the wax very slowly so that you can get a small, controlled stream of wax flowing into the mold. Try to avoid getting the wax on your wick holder, but if you can't, it's okay. Fill the wax as high as you like in the mold. I filled mine all the way, but the paraffin wax does sink down a little bit in the middle as it dries. Now that you're done pouring the wax into the molds, all that's left is to clean up your workspace and wait for them to cool. Make sure that you turn off the burner on your stove that everything hot is away from anything flammable or multiple. Find a tray or a paper plate of some sort that you can put your cooling candles on and move those to the side. It may be hot to the touch, so if you feel like the edge is too hot for you to touch with your fingers, be sure to use an oven mitt whenever you're moving them instead. After the candles are in a safe place, start the cleanup by putting any pieces of wax you find on the counter, floor, or stove onto the protected workspace. While you're doing this, be sure not to touch your hot burner or the hot cooling candles. Carefully shake all of the wax pieces into the center of your protective material like this. Now, fold in all the edges of your protective material so that you can kind of roll it up with the wax pieces safely inside. You can put all of this trash into your garbage now. Be careful not to let the wax pieces fall out while you're rolling up the protective material or carrying it to the trash can. After you've done this, you can use a dry paper towel in your hand to gently wipe the remaining wax pieces and wax dust off the workspace or counters. Be gentle when you're doing this so that the wax doesn't get rubbed into the counter, and don't use a wet paper towel because it could cause the wax to stick to your workspace. Try to treat it kind of similar to flour, but don't press as hard whenever you make your wiping motions. Don't forget to sweep any excess wax off the floor when you're done. 
This is especially important if you have pets or children that might try to eat the pieces that they find. I would not recommend vacuuming the wax because you don't want it to get heated or stuck in the vacuum cleaner for some reason. I also wouldn't recommend mopping or getting the wax wet. The candle should take about 24 hours to finish cooling, but you can wait longer if you like to be on the safe side. When they are done cooling, you can carefully remove the clothespin or other object holding the wick in place. Next, you can trim your wick to the desired length. Be sure not to trim it too short because then the candle won't light. Also, don't cut it too long because then the flame will be too big and the candle might melt faster than you want it to. Depending on the mold that you are using, the candle should slide right out. When your candle is done drying, you can simply turn it over, squeeze the mold a little and it will fall right into your hand. Congratulations, you're done making your first candle. You're ready to light the candle and enjoy your creation. Woo! Thanks for watching this video, I hope you found it helpful.